I have found that I can't really love anything uh, and not share it. It's the same way with tea. I have tea that I love so much and I have so little of it, but I don't want to drink it by myself. Ready for the beginning. What is music if not to share it? I find that the way to teach music, for me, learning through creativity and exploration and having them involved in the creative process at all times. I feel like I've developed a lot as a, a teacher and kind of a human being just through doing. We're all really passionate chamber musicians, which I think really helps the, um, the group dynamic. We all have a passion for working with other people. It was such a little seedling of an idea about just, just a year and a half ago, a music and math education program here on the Navajo Diné Reservation. Now it's really grown into a full-fledged organization with so many different moving pieces and people who care deeply about it. I'm so glad that I got to be here. It was fun to work with the kids and to give these kids a chance to learn instruments. Like I said, there were no classes for music. My name is Ariel Horowitz. I am 21 years old and I am one of the co-founders of the Heartbeat Project. The energy of the team this year, uh, of, of the six Juilliard students and alumni who came out here, I think was so special. And I think that bond of us being such good friends and sharing values and sharing music really has carried over to our students. It's just so exciting to see how the kids want to stay after and are so eager. I learned the uh, whole note, half note, quarter note, and dotted half note. And it's really fun. So I do four Ds actually, then I do a bunch of A class. I think it helps her with uh, exposing her to new experiences, to, you know, people come from different places. They did an activity the other day where they um, used the tambourines and they only played on every third count and were teaching them to count by threes. And she was teaching her brothers that when she got home. Uh, I opted to have my main primary class be the, uh, the oldest students because that's where I have the most experience. But I, they weren't going to let me get away with not dealing with the little ones at all because obviously they're the most difficult ones. And the first day that I did, I couldn't believe what a joy it was. But when you get up close and you have to speak to each one, you meet each one, and they have so much personality. It's impossible not to fall in love with them. The idea of coming back next summer and that they might be here still a year older and remember me uh, is, is really special. Yeah, I think a big part is just building their confidence and that their imaginations can be expressed through music. For example, I played for them um, a movement of Carnival the Animals by Saint-Saëns, and it was the elephant movement, but I didn't tell them, and I was like, what do you think this is? We've done things like story improvs and uh, where the kids tell their own stories or uh, combine different sentences to form a new story, and then we improvise off of it. I very much feel inside myself that I share the roles of both teacher and student, and I think that's, that's one of the really important values of the project, is that all of the teachers um, maintain an attitude of being students of Dine culture. And I grew up in this way where there was no one right way of being and no one right way of living. And I had the opportunity to be exposed to so many different types of people from all over the world just through my mom's work and, and who she is as a person. She chooses to surround herself with people who don't necessarily agree with her and I think that that's very admirable and respectable. And I have always sought out the most meaningful relationships with people who I don't necessarily see eye to eye with and who I don't necessarily understand. And I think that's how we grow the most. I think the most profound moment I had was when we were invited to the family's home. We go hiking back there, just back there. But this is what we use. So we just lit some cedar just to, you know, bring some 
cleansing into the Hogan. And There's just so much I didn't know about Diné culture. And I'm coming away with a curiosity to learn more about that. Um, and also, weirdly, a deeper appreciation for my own traditional um, culture and my own traditional music to incorporate that in my own musical life. And um, especially having uh, Delbert Anderson, the, the jazz trumpet player, and um, talking to him about how he incorporates um, his, you know, uh, Diné traditions into his music. I did not realize kind of the, the reality that is here on the reservation, the struggles that people go through every day in trying to keep and maintain their, their cultural roots in a, in, a, in a world that makes that really difficult. And so I'm really grateful to, to be here and I hope to make an impact here in whatever way I can. Our reservation schools are underfunded, understaffed. For the young people to have an understanding of music, to have an appreciation of music, and to make that connection with different sounds and instruments and how that's related to our own cultural singing and our own cultural instruments, it is a way to get our young people reconnected to our culture. So, and I just saw that play out beautifully at the camp. So it's really been quite a lovely exchange between us and the students and their families and behind the scenes we've had so many other people that I, it would take too long for me to even mention all their names, but it's, it's really been quite a well-oiled machine and uh, everyone has had their part and really contributed beautifully to making just a, a breathtaking and, and stunning experience.